Hey guys, how are you doing? Okay, it's been a long time since I've done any kind of a Goliath beetle breeding video and I can explain why and kind of what happened. So remember my last generation of female beetles were really small because I didn't feed the grubs um, very often. I was feeding them like every 10 days I think I was doing or week. Um, but so the, the female beetles stayed real small. They're only like this big and I barely got any eggs. So that's why I haven't done any update videos for a while because I was kind of discouraged. So honestly, I only have three grubs out of all them females that we that we got when we hatched them out. So obviously I, I experimented with uh, feeding them not so often like every week or 10 days and that didn't work. So um, the time before that, the generation before that, I fed every three days and that worked really good. I did it just every three days, no matter what, for like five or six months. So it was quite a task and I think I was kind of burnt out and I was just like, oh, I'll try, I'll try um, a longer period between feedings and it didn't go so well. So I'll explain, um, I'm on my now third generation of grubs and this time I'm feeding um, every four days and it's going really good and I've learned some stuff and let's take a look at how they're doing. They're a couple months old and I'll, I'll take, I can at least show you guys um, the setup and how to, you know, take care of these grubs and feed them. And if you're a good keeper and feed them every um, three to four days, then you're gonna do awesome and you could have giants. Um, but one thing that I notice really affects the growth of these guys is the temperature. So they grow really fast if you keep them at about 80, you know, 80 degrees, 85 degrees, they'll grow super fast. But I have read that it's possible that they won't get as big. They kind of sprint to the finish line, you know. They, they grow really fast, but they might only get, who knows, they might not get, uh, you know, you might not end up with a 100 gram grub, which is like the epitome of the Goliath beetle grubs, you know. If you get a 100 gram grub, grub uh, you know you did something awesome. And I've had a lot of 80, 80 plus gram uh, larva before with feeding every three days. Um, I think it's good to not bother the grubs so often. Um, so this substrate, I wouldn't have, I shouldn't have used it like this because this substrate actually has sand in it. And uh, I didn't realize how annoying that'd be. It's because be, it looks just like mites. So when you get a mite infestation in your containers, it looks just like this. But this is actually just sand. Um, I was reusing some substrate and it has sand in it. So I kind of learned um, might be best not to use sand in your peat moss. The grubs don't really mind what you use. Um, it just kind of, it's more to do with the moisture content and you don't want the grub to be dirty, like muddy. Um, so if it's too wet or muddy, then the grub will be dirty and muddy and they, it stresses them and they don't seem to grow as well. They don't eat as much. They just seem more stressed. So you want your grub to be kind of clean. Let's see what this one looks like after four days in this substrate. Whoa, yeah, look at this big chunker. Beautiful, look at this, guys. Wow, this one's not, th these guys aren't even that old. Wow, how cool is this? Wow. So this is an L3, of course. So they, they go through three stages of growth. So see, once they have this big old head with the pinchers, um, that is the L3 stage. Aren't they just gorgeous? Beautiful. Uh, what is this, probably 20 grams? Probably 25 grams already. Uh, I usually don't even bother weighing them because it's just, it uh, can stress them. Yeah, look it. 25 grams. See, you can tell I've done some of these in the past. 25.5. So what I'll do quick is get them all out. Let's do this kind of fast because I don't like to stress them. Wow, he's gotten really big. Um, okay, I'm going to get rid of this 
Here, let's just get them out and then I'll show you the, the process. Okay, here's another one about the same, exactly the same. Okay, let's grab the third one out because what we're gonna do is clean the container and we're gonna clean the grubs too. Here we go. Oh, there's a little bit smaller one. They're beautiful, very, very healthy. Okay, so let me just do my thing and then we can keep talking about uh, different food options and stuff. So what I do is just get every, if you want, you can change the substrate every time. But otherwise, like once a month, where should we put this? You guys wanna walk with me? What if a bird came down and grabbed the grubs? Oh, wouldn't that be fu funny? I was gonna say funny. Not really funny though. Um, here we go. Okay. Uh, what am I doing? Okay, so yeah, once a month, you could change the substrate. Or if you wanna get really crazy, just change it every single time. It's not like it's very expensive when it's this small. Um, peat moss is really cheap. You could just use peat moss. This has a little bit of sand in it, but this is pretty much peat moss. Um, so what you wanna do is literally spray. <laughs> you guys be good. Um, you wanna spray everything off, because there's if there's mites, the mites don't hurt anything as long as the populations don't explode. Whoopsies. Uh, so here, let me do this quick. Try not to splash the camera. You guys are on my head. Okay. All right, let's get them ready. So I just get most of the water out. A little bit of water won't matter. Okay, so we, we've got this mite free. If you really want to get crazy, you could brush them out even, but I don't. you don't need to do that. So in this case too, so let's get these guys back in so they don't get stressed. It's better not to weigh them every time. I know it's tempting to try to chart their growth and stuff, but the less you mess with them, the bigger they're gonna get because they're gonna just be happy and eating, you know? So now we have to wash the grubs, but we don't want to spray them with that really cold garden hose. I do use the garden hose sometimes, but you have to let it warm up in the sun and you have to feel it. Make sure it's not hot or cold and then quick spray them, you know, but you could use something like this too. Oh man, see, I actually wish this was higher pressure. Here, hold on. Oops, I hope I'm not jarring you guys. Higher pressure. Uh, Cause we want to spray any, there we go. There we go, this'll work. We want to try to spray any um, mites off of them. There, look at how nice and clean. This is the little one. Okay, we got too much water in there. A little water will be okay. They could even try to drink some if they want. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh yeah, be careful cause they can bite you. It's kind of funny. I've Oh yeah, I've had them draw blood. They're just so cute, I don't mind. Okay, see, nice clean, nice clean grub. Doo, 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 doo. Oh yeah, I gotta make sure I get a good thumbnail. Okay, let's put that one in. Oh, look at it, he's at it. They're happy. Wow, that one might, almost looks like it's drinking, what's it doing? Maybe they do drink a little. <laughs> They're very good at retaining moisture from their food. So we'll talk about the food in a second here. I'm just trying to spray them off. Can you guys see? They like to be clean. So even though they're getting a shower afterwards, they'll appreciate it. Okay, drain that. Okay, there we go, guys. We got three. Big old happy grubs and these are perfect size containers for this size. They actually like to be in a kind of small container So they could they could live the rest of their lives in this container even when they get twice as big or Three times as big we might upgrade one more time if we want to if these guys start to get really big We'll upgrade to a different container and I'll talk about these containers also, but let's just get these guys back underground 
So your substrate, you, you don't want to be able to squeeze any water out of it. But see, it is moist. It clumps, but I can't squeeze any water out of it. If you can squeeze water out of it, it's too, too wet. Because then they're going to get muddy. Their own feces fresh, you know, will get too wet and they'll be crawling around in it. So uh, that's, this is perfect right there. Okay, let's, there, now they're at least happy. Let me, can I spray my own hand off? Oh, geez. Let's use the hose. There we go. Okay, let's grab the lids. We won't put these on yet, but see now the now the grubs are at least not getting stressed. So that's the first thing we'll talk about then is just, um, there's no need to stress them all the time. So when you're feeding them, I know it's tempting, but don't even look at them. Don't even, like if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna change the substrate, um, just feed them from the top. So uh, here, I'll show you what I'm feeding. Any of you guys can find this. Uh, it's Purina Moist and Meaty. Uh, this is steak flavor. They're these little moist chunks. And they already have, I think, let's see, the moisture content. Let's see, where's the protein and stuff? Okay, yep, the protein is 18%. So that's kind of lower than some people would like to feed. You know, some of them koi pellets have like, 30 and 40 percent protein you want your protein to be really high um, and your fat to be low so i guess this is probably not ideal the fat's kind of high and the the protein's kind of low but that's just it's not even a proven fact but people realize the more protein you feed them um the faster or i mean larger people have noticed that they get and it's kind of weird, but too much fat, the fat can actually accumulate on the outside of their body. It's really strange. They must secrete it. So it'll, it'll build up around their mandibles and stuff and um, make them, you know, they'll, it can interfere with them feeding. So it's, it's weird. So, but I've never really had that happen because see, I spray them off really good. So I always spray their head off. And so I'm not too worried about this fat content. But um, this stuff works great. And look, it's 33% moisture. So see, you don't have to add with the koi pellets and stuff, you have to soak them in water and it's kind of annoying. Look, these are just ready to go. So at this stage, I'm gonna feed, I feed three to four. Here, let's get a few out. Um, and you can either feed them on the top. So see, like I said, if you don't wanna disturb your grubs, they like, they like coming up to the top and hunting there's a bug on me. Um, they like coming up to the top and hunting, so you can just set them on the top in the edge and they'll grab them. So you could just set them like that and they'll come up and get them. Otherwise, if you wanna, if you wanna directly, um, here, we'll put four. Um, if you wanna directly put them down in its tunnel after a few days or they'll have a tunnel and I'll, sometimes I'll poke my finger down into their tunnel like this because I'll feel the hollow tunnel under there, you know? And then I just pop them down into their tunnel like boop. And then that gets them down in there right by the, the grub. So let's do four, four, and four. So then they get all their moisture from these. They don't, you don't need to do no water, you know, like gel or crystals or nothing like that. Ooh, mosquitoes out here. Uh, so this will be perfectly fine just like this. Let's cap them off and talk about these containers. So these are from the Dollar Tree. These are rubber made. I might have explained these containers in one of the other videos, but whatever. Uh, if you're a good keeper, then put the date uh, that the the grub was hatched. I didn't do that this time because I was discouraged, but I like how these guys are growing. So uh, now I want to see, maybe I'll get lucky and I'll get at least a male and a female and I can keep my, I can keep my uh, colony going, you know? I'm not giving up yet, but I'll tell you why I use these. It's because they stack like this and I put the air holes along the edge. So see, I have about a hundred, maybe 50 or a hundred little tiny air holes that I made with a tiny little nail. I put it in a vice grips and I went pop, 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 pop because I made them super tiny so gnats couldn't get in. Gnats are gonna try to find the moisture. So you don't want gnats to get in by your stuff. So if you poke holes, do tiny little needle holes, but do a whole bunch of them. That's my advice. 
Uh, and look, these you can stack and put in bins. And look, these don't, the, the holes are not being covered. See? So these are perfect. So see, you can stack a ton of them like that. The last time I, or two times ago, I cared for 40. I had to do this 40 with 40 containers. So I had stacks of them. And I had big, huge grubs. It was awesome. So that's why I like these. So uh, there'll always be a constant argument about their food source. But let's, if you guys want to follow along how big these, these uh, three get off of just this brand, I haven't fed anything else. So let's see if, if they end up, um, you know, between 50 and 100 grams. The females, you know, usually only get 40 or 50 grams. Um, and then the big males, you know, usually like 70 or 60 to 100, you know, it depends. So and these are in, being kept in really warm temperatures upstairs in my room. So they're growing kind of fast. So I don't know if they would get like 100 grams, but we'll see. Um, let's see. Did I cover? Did I cover everything? Yes. Just don't don't worry about weighing them so much and stressing them. Just only take them out when you're going to do a substrate change and clean them and put them back in and then just leave them alone. Like, you know, even pop these off gentle and slow and feed them from the top and then just put it back and they're going to do better. They'll be healthier and you'll get to see them plenty once they become a beetle. So, all right, guys, I think that's all I wanted to cover. I'll keep doing updates on these three grubs, and I hope this helps some of the new people because I noticed there was some traction on my other videos about the Goliath beetles. People were still viewing them, so there must be people that want to, to know. So, and this, of course, I seal it up in a real nice um, bag. Otherwise, this stuff dries out really fast. And this stuff lasts forever. This, this can feed grubs for a couple generations maybe. So, all right guys, hit the like button because it'll help the video. And uh, subscribe if you like all kinds of weird projects. All right, see you guys on the next one. Bye. GoPro, stop recording.